Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Um, Thomas will be on shortly, uh, any minute now. Hi, James, did you have a question? No, I just um, logged in like I usually do for the Thursday meeting. Okay, great. Uh, Thomas should be here any second to go over the summary. Thank you. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Apologies for uh, running running late. Thank you for waiting. Let me see who we got on. Hey, Brian. Aloha, Diane, Francis, Jim. Um, hey, Josh. Uh, nice to uh, see you, Susan, and thanks for joining, Tammy. Um, so let me just pull up these slides, and then we will uh, get going with today's uh, community meeting. So uh, obviously, lots of stuff going. <laughs> a lot of a lot of COVID news nationally, internationally, locally. So um, Japan wrapped up the Olympics, uh, but as you can tell, they're still uh, going through uh, a, a very big, you know, at one, two, three, four, fifth wave of, of you know this one definitely being driven by Delta. Um, so. You know, with, with tourism at a high for, for a long time, you know, we're, even with safe travels, it's still worth noting, um, you know, even with the safe travels test, you know, there, there's still uh, potential for cases to slip through in terms of travel. South Korea, uh, what looked to be on a downward trend is still uh, trending up. Um, no, no surprise, 
I'm remembering that for these two countries, Japan and Korea, their vaccine rates definitely are not as high as Hawaii or even as United States as a whole, which explains why uh, COVID uh, Delta is just going, uh, is just um, spreading so quickly through their population. India uh, still relatively flat, though you know at, at one point last week they were going through a, a slight blip, but still nothing compared uh, to the magnitude with which they experienced that that crazy surge when they were the first country to uh, to to really be hit with Delta. And then no surprise if you're paying attention to the news at all the past week or two, uh, the entire country is, is pretty much uh, at least uh, light red, if not red in terms of community transmission, most majority of the counties across the, the, the country. Um, and once again, that's due to just how infectious uh, the Delta variant is. Um, Arizona, California, no, no surprises here, um, especially if you track some of the, the lack of mitigation um, in, in some of the states throughout the country. Nevada, Texas, definitely, and obviously Texas, there's a anti-mask mandate um, that is uh, kind of being contested um, in that state. Um, and, and we know masks are a big role in, in mitigating uh, COVID, especially with Delta. Uh, unfortunately, this is not what we uh, are hoping to see at all within our state. You know, um, all, our positivity for, for all counties and state overall is well above um, that 3%, you know, and, and no surprise, we've just been paying attention to the news. Our vaccination efforts have, are, are promising where we're close to 61%. However, uh, you know, it's still slower than what we were hoping to see, you know, based on uh, modeling by Dr. Sheba and her team, you know, we, we know, you know, even though the modeling is not perfect based on certain scenarios, um, you know, for every 5% um, or so of the population that gets vaccinated, it, we see a substantial decrease in future transmission. So, you know, we still have a long ways to go. Um, and, and, you know, like the governor said, it's going to take a while before we see the fruits of the labor in terms of vaccine increases in vaccine efforts. Uh, and, and you can tell, obviously, uh, current surge, we're, unfortunately, we're not going anywhere in terms of cases, hospitalizations, and, and ICUs. Um, and, and a slight disconnect with the ICUs because of uh, changing parameters with, with the Delta with compared to the previous um, variant, you know, where we're trying to account for that in, in our two week forecast. Once again, this slide is just what we saw um, previously. And, and it's important to know a, a big increase in the ICUs. You know, what, what we're still quite, what we're still unsure about is, um, what proportion of the population will end up in the ICU. You know, we had a decent estimation with the original strain and even with alpha, uh, but with Delta, um, there's, a, there's a couple factors. Um, the population at risk in Hawaii for Delta is, is different than the population at risk um, last year. You know, the elderly population for the most part and the, uh, those with comorbidities are, are for the most part protected. And those are the ones truly at risk for hospitalization, death and ICUs. Um, even though Delta is much more infectious, um, the population at risk now is uh, slightly younger. And while they're unvaccinated, you know, and, and, and at slightly increased risk of hospitalization and severe illness, uh, we're not seeing um, what we expected to see in terms of the, the parallel surge in hospitalizations and ICUs um, given our case counts. So uh, lo lots of stuff to unpack for the past week and a half to two weeks since our, our last meeting. Um, and, uh, you know, the, this is only just the surface, but hopefully it's enough to kind of get everybody up to speed um, at, across all levels. So, you know, two days ago, the governor uh, signed uh, an executive order uh, reinstating uh, gathering size limits, 10 people or fewer indoors and no more than 25 outdoors. And then for high risk areas such as bars, <clears throat> restaurants, gyms, et cetera, 50% maximum occupancy and uh, really no mingling. And then uh, what's important to note is for professionally sponsored events, they do give the option to work with the county to, uh, to hold those events in, in a safe manner. Uh, this is very big um, and I'm very happy to see uh, CDC finally truly endorsing uh, this particular population because we do see um, quite a bit of uh, hesitancy amongst uh, females who 
are considering getting pregnant or who are pregnant. And, and really the data shows that it is ex the COVID vaccines are extremely safe, um, not only for the, the, the mother, but for the, the child. And, and it has no adverse impact on uh, fertility and uh, potential for, for getting pregnant. So, so that's big and um, hopefully should address some concerns from this particular population who remains hesitant uh, uh, on getting the vaccine. Uh, just yesterday, uh, there are a lot of reports about FDA uh, set within the next 48 hours. So either probably tomorrow, I didn't see anything today, uh, to authorize uh, a booster shot for a specific population, the immunocompromised individuals. And um, you know that's for both the Pfizer and Moderna. What we do know is that um, even fully vaccinated immunocompromised individuals uh, suffer a significantly decreased efficacy or protection against the Delta variant specifically. Um, and, and, and that's why the, the FDA is authorizing um, a booster for this population itself. Um, and, but, but in parallel to that, the WHO is, is calling for a pause on countries who want to uh, use, the, use additional vaccines for boosters in their populations. You know, the, the WHO has a goal by the end of September to have 10% of every single nation in the world to get at least uh, sorry, uh, for every country in the world to have at least 10% of their respective populations fully vaccinated. And, and we know that that's probably not gonna be the case. Um, you know, I, I think the theme is we are in it together, not just as a country. And I've been saying this since, you know, six months ago, we're really not going to make a major impact in, in bringing COVID to, down to a point where it's more of an afterthought than it is in the forefront of our everyday lives until we achieve uh, an equitable uh, you know, distribution of vaccines across the world. Uh, we see how quickly Delta can uh, run through uh, a population that is not protected. Um, and there are still huge proportions of the world that are, are not even partially vaccinated. So this is, this is big and, and calling on the first world nations to, to really not to hoard vaccines and not to purchase all of them. Um, so, so uh, I'm pausing here, taking a look at a Q&A uh, from Susan. The DOH announced they can't do all the contact tracing and asked the public to do their own calls and contacts with no request of report back. How, how could this influence the data? Um, definitely great, great point, Susan. It, it can have a huge impact on data. Um, I, I know we've been in collaboration with our partners in DOH in terms of really pushing the, the Aloha Safe app, which is a uh, using technology to really um, as a force multiplier with regard to contact tracing data collection. However, you know, at the end of the day, the, we need to hear from uh, the, the, our, our brethren in the DOH to, to really give guidance. And uh, it, what we know is if there's not sufficient uh, testing and or contact tracing capacity, there's gonna be a lot of missed cases, and then as a result, a lot of transmission that could have been prevented and then now is uh, perpetuating across the community. Um, and then people are getting tested when they are symptomatic versus when, when they should have gotten tested if they are identified as a close contact and then uh, quarantined or isolated um, sooner and, and really preventing future transmission. So that has a big, uh, big impact on, on what we're seeing within the state. Um, has there been a way to factor in contacts into the data. Uh, what is the average number of contacts of cases based on, on what I know? You know, uh, Susan, it, it's a um, great question. I, I would say we had a decent understanding um, and, and you know, I, I, maybe three to seven with the original strain last year with Delta um, and with how infectious it is with an R naught between, you know, six and eight, uh, it, it is, almost impossible to, to know um, what to, the answer to that question. And, you know, and, and there's a whole host of other factors, you know, how, depending on if people wear masks, if they're close contacts, et cetera. So um, it is definitely a huge concern. Um, and and uh, one that I know the Department of Health is, is, is aware of, but, um, you know, uh, that's, you know, that's why we have been really pushing vaccines because that is the best uh, preventative effort against 
future transmission. Uh, so Tammy, um, currently in Kansas City, do you think the governor will change travel restrictions? You know, based on what I'm hearing, uh, he hasn't mentioned, he did say no changes at this time to safe travels. <clears throat> I, I, I'm not sure, you know, he's very measured in how he puts out his guidance and the timing um, and the day of the week, though, you know, things with Delta are rapidly adjust, you know, impacting how, uh, you know, this is just me speaking, how he changes the calculus and, and looks at it. Um, but, but nothing as of yet. Uh, I mean, so I'm sure everybody's going to get a Hawaii News Now alert um, as soon as something happens, but, but no, no changes as of yet. <laughs> no, that's not good, Jim. Uh, we, we love to hear you participate. So uh, moving on to the next, oops. Oh, I thought I had one more slide. No, I guess that was it. So um, I'm glad, so, so that was the last slide. What I will say, kind of just summarizing everything is, we know Delta is much more infectious, especially if you're not vaccinated which is why we're really pushing for it. Um, one, because we want to really reduce the possibility of further mutations um, that can occur. Delta is the perfect example of what happens when, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> you don't, you give the virus enough time to find a sweet spot. If you look at the genetic sequencing across the world and across UK and even the United States, within a matter of weeks, Delta overtook Alpha as the dominant strain. And, you know, and that's why we're seeing such short time frame in terms of the, the huge surge. What is positive is that vaccines do protect very well against severe illness and death, even against Delta. And so that's why we're really pushing for it and to, to use that. But you know, at the end of the day, our goal is to, to really try to move past it. And until we get equitable distribution across the world, <clears throat> we're, we're, we're not gonna get there. So some good news, you know, Dr. Tim Brown um, gave, a, I think you can find a YouTube East West Center. He did an hour long lecture and he was cited today by Hawaii News now where, you know, he thinks COVID is gonna be here for two to three more years. <clears throat> That's a possibility. What, I, what I've learned to expect with COVID is to not try to predict and just try to look at the short term and see what we can do uh, in terms of prevention and education. So <clears throat> I would just say, stay tuned. Um, we will be reducing our, our weekly, our, our uh, Thursday sessions to so once a month. But if anything crazy pops up, uh, then, then we'll definitely send everyone an email um, to, to update you because there are some important things that we're just waiting for, for example, FDA approval. I think that's going to be a game changer uh, for vaccination rates and potentially <clears throat> really impacting positively the, the trajectory of our response to COVID. So um, I'll stand by for any questions or comments, Governor Shirsten Krauss, but not Krauss's students in schools. So excuse me, Susan, what you're, you're exactly spot on. What we do know, and, and you know, I'm not a policymaker and um, thankfully I don't, I don't get paid to do that. I get paid to advise and to just look at the science. But what CDC is showing is if schools follow the right mitigation efforts, mitig uh, transmission is really low. When masks are not worn, when social distance, physical distancing is not implemented, that's where you start to see um, pretty big transmission across uh, the younger population. So um, it's definitely still an area of concern. So Brian, is uh, UK seeing another surge? You know, I, I have to admit, I, I pay more attention to the Pacific just because uh, of what I do in, in the army right now, I'm 
really focus on the Pacific region. Uh, I mean, from, from the graph that you shared with the group, it, it definitely looks like it. <clears throat> and, and, you know, I have to do a little more research. It could be, you know, they did identify a Delta plus. I'm not sure if it's been attributed to that, but I know UK has a very robust uh, genetic sequencing uh, capability. Um, so we'll, we'll definitely keep an eye out on, uh, on that. So um, thanks for bringing that to, to my attention. Any, any sources of data of cases? Are you talking, uh, Brian, are you talking about uh, Hawaii or? I know DOH does a good breakdown. Um, let, me see, let me just see. I think they, they do, um, oh, places that have gone through the Delta surge already. You know, uh, I, I think that that's a we we I can look at that for for our next next meeting. I, I think we're just gonna have to do a little leg work and just you know, UK, you know, obviously we're still going through it, but you know we're we're definitely in the midst of of Delta, uh, India, and, and trying to look at uh, um, stratify by age and see if there's any trends we can identify, especially for the peds population. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll make note of that and we'll try to get that uh, for for our next meeting. Okay, any other questions or comments? Okay, thank you everybody for, for attending. Uh, please stay safe. Um, I'm sure you guys are already vaccinated. Wear masks when you're in public. That's really the, the best you can do. Um, and try to limit your interactions with people who you know you can trust in terms of their protection as well. And we'll see you uh, at our next Thursday meeting. Have a great afternoon, everybody. Thank you.